Hello everybody, I hope you all are doing good. So we are going to start our new series in which we will be talking about diabetic retinopathy. So because diabetes is the leading cause of blindness uh, in the entire world and being a doctor you should know that what is the um, what is the pathophysiology behind this, okay? Because I'm going to be starting with pathophysiology. It's the most important part of this topic. You should know how diabetes is linked to the blindness. Okay, so listen to me carefully, okay? This is your small vessel or your capillary. Remember this, okay? Suppose this is your small vessel, a capillary, right? And around this vessel, you have a layer of cells, right, like this. These cells are known as pericytes, okay? These cells are known as pericytes. Okay, so these pericytes regulate the blood flow in, in, in the capillary, right? And they also um, protect these uh, capillaries from uh, any kind of inflammation by engulfing the foreign matter or bacteria. So they are pretty protective for the um, your capillary, right? These pericytes Remember, these pericytes have a special feature. They take up the glucose without the need of insulin, right? They do not need insulin for the glucose, okay? So, they take up the glucose without the need of insulin, right? So, whenever there is increased glucose in the surrounding of these cells, they will take excess glucose, obviously, inside of them. So, what happens in diabetes? In diabetes, there is hyperglycemia, right? So, there is increased amount of glucose hyperglycemia, there is increased glucose in the blood, and these cells take excess glucose inside of them, right? And then they convert this glucose into a substance known as sorbitol, right? And this sorbitol has two properties now. This sorbitol cannot leave the cell because the cell membrane is impermeable to the sorbitol as it's water soluble. So it 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 will be uh, in it will remain inside of cell. Okay, it will stay there. So it is impermeable and it cannot cross the cell membrane now. So it will stay there for a long period of time. And then it it is osmotically active substance means it attracts water inside of cell. So there will be classically increased water influx. And now these pericytes will swell, something like this. There is water inside of them, and now they are swelled. Okay, what happens? When something like this happens, these pericytes will be damaged now, right? These pericytes will be damaged now. So what happens to your capillary now? Your capillary acquires microaneurysms. Aneurysms are basically outpouching of the vessels. So this happens to a vessel that has lost its pericytes. So the area where pericytes have been lost, there is formation of microaneurysms. These black are the remaining pericytes, okay? So this over here is a microaneurysm. Why this microaneurysm occurred? Because of the loss of pericytes and why the damage to pericytes occurred? Because there is there was excess glucose in the surrounding, these cells took up excess glucose inside of them and then converted that glucose into sorbitol and sorbitol uh, attract, attracted water, okay? And these um, pericytes uh, become swollen and now they have eventually uh, damaged, okay? What happens now? Most important part, okay? This, this microaneurysm right over here, focus on this, okay? This is the microaneurysm and the one over here. Okay, this microaneurysm um, disturbs the flow of the blood, right? And whenever there is disturbance in the flow of blood, you know that there is formation of thrombus in the in that vessel. So either they can form thrombus inside of them, or they can even bleed, right? Uh, even they can become ruptured. Suppose this aneurysm has ruptured, okay? And there will be formation of hemorrhage, right? You will see on endoscopy hemorrhage. So whenever there is thrombus formation, there is ischemia. Obviously, the tissue or the cells uh, supplied by this uh, vessel will not receive enough blood and it will eventually become ischemic. And remember this thing, your retina is all composed of your 
let me make it over here your retina is composed of the nerve cells right like this suppose this is the nerve cell and nerve endings are classically present in the retina so this part is present in the retina and when these nerve endings become ischemic they appear as swollen and whitish colored okay i'm gonna make it from with this color they appear they appear swollen and whitish in color which you appreciate as cotton wool spots on fundoscopy remember this thing okay i'm gonna repeat it for you whenever there is thrombus formation or there is hemorrhage because the vessel that has blood uh, that has ruptured is not able to supply the tissue right in both the cases a thrombus and a hemorrhage in both the cases the um, tissue will die the tissue will become ischemic and the whole retina we are talking about retina right we are talking about the retinal vessels so whole of the retina uh, is composed of your nerve endings right these things over here nerve endings so when these nerve endings become ischemic you see it as swollen whitish colored right and this swollen uh, whitish colored nerve ending is known as cotton wool spot remember this thing okay so you know the cotton wool spot is this thing cotton wool spots are the ischemic nerve endings and why you know the background now okay let's talk about hemorrhage now if this uh, microaneurysm uh, bleeds what happens there is blood okay you see, uh, basically, you see micro hemorrhages on uh, fundoscopy in people with diabetic retinopathy. Okay, whenever there is blood, you know, there is lipid content. And in diabetes, you have excess lipid present in these patients. So there is lipid, right? And this lipid is taken up by your macrophages. Let me draw it here. Suppose a vessel become ruptured and there is hemorrhage and with the, um, with the within the blood you have macrophages oh sorry not macrophages you have your lipids and when these lipids are taken up by your macrophages like this these macrophages these lipid laden macrophages appear as hard exudates okay these appear as yellowish colored okay these appear as yellowish on fundoscopy and these are classically known as hard exudates. Okay, I'm going to repeat whole process for you so you understand this clearly. Okay. This is your small vessel, your capillary uh, inside of your retina. Around the, this capillary you have cells known as parasites. These parasites have special feature. They take up the glucose without the need of insulin and whenever there is hyperglycemia around them as seen in diabetic patients, they take excess glucose and then they convert this glucose into sorbitol. Sorbitol is uh, osmotically active and obviously it, it's impermeable to the cell membrane so it cannot cross the cell membrane it will stay inside the cell for a longer period of time. And uh, one more thing, this sorbitol uh, absorbs water, right? It attracts water and there is classically swelling of the parasite and this parasite eventually gets ruptured so this parasite when when the parasite has ruptured this um, the part of the vessel develops microaneurysm now this microaneurysm can form thrombus uh, because of the altered blood flow uh, this can even bleed okay there is hemorrhage formation when there is thrombosis or uh, hemorrhage in both the cases the uh, the area supplied or the nerve endings supplied by this vessel will become ischemic and the nerve endings when they become ischemic they appear as uh, whitish swollen right known as cotton wool spots on the fundoscopy and when there is hemorrhage with the blood uh, the, the the with it, with the blood there will be lipid in the um, in the retina in the nerve endings and this lipid is engulfed by your macrophages and this macrophage which is your lipid laden macrophage appears as yellowish colored known as hard exudate okay okay so these are the two findings that you see on um, fundoscopy actually we have talked about four findings that you will see on fundoscopy number one you you will see these uh, microaneurysms right then you will see uh, your uh, hemorrhage micro hemorrhages okay number two your micro hemorrhages then you will see these cotton wool spots and number four you see these heart exudates on fundoscopy okay when there is ischemia okay 
when there is ischemia your body tissue secrete a substance known as VEGF vascular endothelial growth factor this VEGF promotes the uh, formation of new vessels again okay, there is classically new vascularization or you can say there will be angiogenesis now your retina is full of new vessels now let me make it over here uh, with this color suppose this is your retina this is your optic nerve and this is uh, cornea and sclera okay so suppose there there was ischemia over here let me make it with this color there was ischemia over here over here over here and these areas secreted VEGF resulting in new vascularization right new vessels are formed inside the retina these vessels are not formed uh, only in the retina but they are also formed in the disc okay on the disc optic disc remember this thing okay these vessels are formed on the disc and elsewhere this is the word used okay but these vessels are not strong they are very fragile they are very weak and they rupture really easily leading to hemorrhage now this hemorrhage is inside the vitreous right this is the vitreous over here vitreous humor and this hemorrhage is classically seen in the in the vitreous what happens now as a healing process right there will be fibrosis there will be fibrosis what happens now important thing important 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 okay i'm going to repeat there was ischemic uh, nerve ending and these ischemic nerve endings secreted vegf and this vegf promoted new vascularization these vessels are extremely fragile they're extremely weak and they bleed okay and there is hemorrhage seen inside of the vitreous humor when there is hemorrhage inside of vitreous humor as a healing process what happens there is fibrosis classically whenever there is fibrosis now see your retina is attached to your vitreous and when this vitreous contracts it pulls this retina along with it and this is classically known as tractional retina detachment because the retina has been detached via a traction created by vitreous remember this thing this is uh, the most dangerous thing that can happen with any diabetic patient okay so there will be tractional retinal detachment if this has progressed a lot and there is a huge formation of uh, these fragile vessels okay let us read the text together uh, yeah here there is insulin resistance as seen in diabetic patients there's high glucose levels in blood okay whether there is insulin resistance or there is high glucose levels in the blood because um, uh, or insulin deficiency basically because it happen it can happen in both uh, uh, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes okay so there is insulin resistance or there is insulin deficiency leading to high glucose levels in blood uh, parasites take up the glucose convert glucose to sorbitol sorbitol is osmotically active and impermeable plasma membrane water influx occur there is loss of parasites or parasites get damaged when parasites get damaged there there are the formation of um, there are microaneurysms or there's the formation of microaneurysms then these microaneurysms can uh, develop microthrombi or they can even bleed leading to ischemia of the nerve fibers supplied by this particular vessel and when there is ischemia of nerve fibers you see them as uh, cotton wool spots on fundoscopy and whenever there is blood with blood there there is a lipid present inside the blood and that lipid is taken up by your macrophages and they become lipid laden macrophages leading to heart exudates and this is also seen on fundoscopy now excess vascular excessive vascular damage leads to vegetative secretion leading to new vascularization elsewhere and on disc these vessels can even bleed causing tractional retinal detachment these vessels when grow extensively pushing the lens forward okay important thing let me make it over here okay no not with this color with this color this is your lens right this is your lens and in the retina the patient has developed huge amount of new vascularization these vessels can come like this and then they can even push this lens forward anteriorly and you know that here you have the anterior chamber right this is anterior chamber angle 
and here you have the drainage of aqueous humor occurring, right? So when this lens is pushed forward, it classically blocks this thing over here. And this leads to buildup of aqueous humor over here. And obviously, you know, whenever there is aqueous humor inside of the anterior chamber, it leads to glaucoma. So these patients can develop glaucoma. Remember this thing, okay? So the diabetic patients can develop uh, traction lateral attachment, they can develop glaucoma as well. So this was the video. I hope you understood everything really well. If you have any kind of questions, kindly write them down in the comment section below. And um, kindly subscribe to the channel because it motivates, to, motivates me to make more of such videos for you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Best of luck.